So, welcome back to the second lecture of the module 1. So, in the last lecture what we have seen is we have seen a difference between a microscopic state and a macroscopic state and we have also seen what is the difference between energy level and energy states. So, we will elaborate on these aspects more detail in this current lecture. So, the current lecture focuses on the postulates and the Boltzmann distribution. So, what we will cover is the postulates of statistical mechanics which is where the entire our idea that is of the information can be condensed in a statistical manner is presumed. So, we have two postulates we will discuss that. Then uh, one of the postulates outcome is as I told you in the last lecture it is propose a distribution a probabilistic distribution. So, what is the distribution? One of the distribution is the in terms of energy we will discuss and derive the Boltzmann energy distribution. What does it mean? Then finally, with the outcome of the Boltzmann energy distribution is the canonical partition function. So, it is a ensemble of states as I discussed which is consistent with number of molecules, a fixed volume and a total energy. So, we call that in short form as N, V and E. Okay. So, moving ahead. So, let us go for the first postulate. The first postulate states that all microstates of the system of volume V that have the same energy and the same number of particles are equally probable. So, we are talking about in this case in terms of canonical partition function. It means the states of the system which has a number of particles, total volume and the total energy to be constant. So, it means I can have number of states with the values of N, V, E. So, it means that I cannot say this state is more probable, the other state is less probable or I can add some weight to it, I cannot do that. In this manner, the first postulate says that all are possible. So, all are equally possible, I would put in the correct perspective. So, this is also called uh, in statistical mechanics language equally a priori probability principle. Okay. So, it means it will tell us how to choose a probability distribution. So, it means if we know all the states are equal or all the states are equally probable, then can we define, can we define a probability distribution di or the probability distribution expression? So, we will see that in the next postulate. So, the next postulate states that the time average, I will write here long time average. The long time average of any mechanical property in a real macroscopic system is equal to the average value of that property over all the microscopic states of the system, each state weight with the probability of occurrence, provided that the microscopic states replicate the thermodynamic states and environment of the actual system. What does it mean? So, it is a pretty long postulate. It means that for any observable property or a mechanical property or a thermal property which I discussed in the last class, let us say we talk about pressure or temperature or volume, any property it is actually a long term average property and it is an outcome. So, macroscopic system means what we deal in classical thermodynamics, we deal with the overall macroscopic property. So, that outcome is due to the average value of many such outcomes. So, those outcomes are called as microscopic states. All the microscopic states are of equal number, volume and energy. And then it says that weighted with this probability of occurrence. So, it means that uh, as I told you and I discussed in the last class, there are two things which we need to work here that is energy level and energy states. Energy level and energy states. So, by this time you must be knowing what they signify. So, energy level means what are the different levels our energy in the molecule has or in assembly of molecules has. And then each of the energy level can correspond to number of microstates. So, if suppose energy level 1, energy level 2, energy level 1, 2, 3, 4 like that I am enumerating the number of energy levels. But each level let us say one of the first energy level may have 10 corresponding states each of equal energy. Second energy level may have four corresponding states or microscopic states each having the same energy. So, it means that 
the probability when I talk of the probability of occurrence means we have to weigh it, weigh what is this weight, this weighted means we are multiplying that with the degeneracy, degeneracy means if I talk about degeneracy I will write this sign, this one. So, probability of occurrence of let us say energy E A, let us say there is an energy E A or a particular energy state or energy level which is E A is nothing but the probability of locating a microstate or energy level with the value E A multiplied by the number of states having the same energy E A. So, this is called the weighted part. So, weighted part is you multiply with the degeneracy. that is what it says the postulate weighted with its probability. So, this is the weight is the probability provided now provided that is what I am saying that all the states corresponding to let us say there are four number of states are all equivalent and equal to E A. So, all the states shall replicate the thermodynamic states it means all the states will have the same number of volume and energy. This is also sometimes called as ergotic hypothesis. So, what are the outcome of these two postulates? That is experimental measurement is really a long time measurement on a molecular time scale. So, for example, whatever we do, suppose we do some measurement experiment in a lab. So, it is like uh, whatever we get a result at the end of your experiment, for example, you mix two liquids and try to find out if they are a homogeneous or a heterogeneous system. So, it means what you do you mix it, let us suppose you mix two components, mix it and leave it aside for certain time so that equilibrium is reached, then you come to know whether they are mixed or not. So, it is a long term average. So, experiment measurement is a really a long time measurement on a molecular. So, ultimately all those molecular events are happening when you are finally getting to know whether it is homogeneous or heterogeneous, but it is a long time you wait for in the order of let us say seconds or minutes. So, the first postulate which I discussed previously it tells us how to choose the probability distribution. So, if all the microstates are equally probable how do I choose? So, it actually gives direction how to choose the probability distribution. While the second postulate establishes the thermodynamic properties it means whatever we define, whatever we define the probability distribution. So, the thermodynamic properties computed from this probability distribution will be equivalent to that what we will measure. So, suppose it will mimic the system. So, if you mimic the system you need a distribution expression. So, whatever distribution expression it should give the same values macroscopic properties as you have in the experiment. Now, what we are doing we are not interested in the movement of n number of molecules and hitting the container or the collisions measure the collisions update the trajectory we are no longer doing that. But we are replacing those with respect to statistical average which is given in terms of probability distribution. Okay, so, this is the way both the postulates are placed. So, it means one of them will give us how the probability distribution is to define, another one tells us if it is defined it will give the average value or the thermodynamic properties of the system of the interest. So, now the simplest one which we will consider now today is the Boltzmann distribution function. So, this is the simplest probability distribution function. So, what we do for consider this distribution function, we consider if you see I have considered as a rectangular box. So, it is a rectangular box. So, if I draw it, so the overall box some, looks something like this. I have made a three dimensional diagram. So, in this box, there are two subsystems. Let us suppose this is subsystem A and let us suppose this is subsystem B. So, I can write down small s a and small s b. So, we have a big in this case a rectangular box. So, what I have written here is the rectangular box if I read here we assign probability to states of different energies for a system of fixed volume and number of particles in contact with the large heat bath. So, this entire rectangular box is assumed to be a large heat bath. Okay. So, in the large heat bath there are two subsystems A and B abbreviated as SA and SB which are in touch 
with the heat bath but not with each other okay so there are two subsystems contained within a large heat bath which has both the subsystems have constant number n v and e so now here it may be characterized by a energy ea and it may be characterized by the energy eb total energy but we will worry about that later once we define what is the probability first let us first define the probability then we will worry about the system condition so important thing let us first go through the assumption because that is important so the microscopic systems a and b are in contact with the infinite heat of constant temperature so if they are at constant temperature it means they will able to supply energy to either a or b so it means the temperature of the infinite source of heat doesn't change as the heat source is so large so the heat source is so large that a and b are unaffected by the presence of one another so it means that whether a is in it doesn't know that b is there it is unaffected by the presence of b so any changes which are happening in b will not show up in a or vice versa any change happening in system a will not show in b so they are unaffected but they are within the thermal reservoir so quantifically we can write down as fluctuation of energy or temperature in system a has no effect on system b and vice versa so if there is any fluctuation in energy in system a it does not change the energy of system b or energy or temperature or if there is a fluctuation in temperature b it does not change anything in system a okay so now we see we assign probabilities so we define the probabilities of system a and b what are these so as before i will just mark out the system a and system b and you have the thermal reservoir i need not write here so now that i will define two terms i will assign probability to both the subsystem a and b so what is this probability so i will write here probability p a en what is this pa en it means what is the probability it is the probability of locating a subsystem a with energy en okay so it means it is a one particular microstates one particular microstate sa so i am writing here sa as subsystem a and sb as subsystem b so one particular micro sa which has energy which has energy en okay there may be many such particular micro states having en so i am talking about one such micro states and based on the first postulate all the micro states are equally probable so this should not be confused with what is the probability of locating a subsystem a so there may be many such possibilities because if you talk about the probability of locating a particular this orientation that is this microstate then you have to multiply with their degeneracy then you will find the absolute probability of locating the subsystem a because we know that with this subsystem a there are many such microstates each having a total energy of en okay so if you talk about absolute probability we multiply with the degeneracy that will be give you the absolute probability but now here only i am defining there are many such microstates which has energy en so it means pa en is the that probability so what is the probability of having a microstate with energy en so likewise another probability i can define is pb em again the same thing this is one particular microstate microstate sb which has energy which has energy e let's say em so this is en and this is em okay 
So, this is the probability of locating a microstate of energy Em and this is the probability of a state of energy with energy En. Okay. Now, my next question may be what is the probability of simultaneously finding system A in SA and system B in SB. So, I mean what is you may have different states, you may have different energy levels. So, if I enumerate them, so if I table them out, so what is the probability I may be seeing that this particular subsystem has energy En and the particular subsystem B has energy Em. So, that is if you agree it will be nothing but the probability of these two probability of En multiplied by probability of B, A and B represent the subsystems and Em represents the total energy. So, this will be the product of these two, right? Because En and Em are with respect to each subsystem and both the events are mutually independent. So, as I told you any change in system A is not affected in system B. So, they are independent. So, the overall probability of locating A and B in SA and SB are the product of these two probabilities. So, moving ahead, so it means what now if I ask the question, what is the probability of finding the composite system A plus B in a particular microstate SAB instead of dealing it separately? So, what is the probability of locating both the subsystems together? A and B in a particular microstate. So, instead of SA and SB, this is this was the system which we just now defined. This is say subsystem A and subsystem B. So, what is the probability of a composite system? Now, I do not want to write separately. I need a single value of probability. So, single value of probability is something like I need two subsystems with energy Em and En respectively. So, that single probability is nothing but these two the product of the individual probability. So, it means, so if I want to write down in terms of mathematics, I can write down probability of locating a composite system A B. Okay. So, that will be equal to E A B if I want to write down that overall system energy of the composite system that is A plus B. So, it means E A plus E B, I do not write E A plus E B, what this means that this is nothing but the energies of subsystem E M plus E N, this E M is the energy system for A and E N is for B. So, it means that what we have discussed in the previous slide, the probability, overall probability of locating our energy, composite energy E A B is nothing but equal to P A B. So, I write here E m plus E n which is equal to nothing but P a into E n into P b into E m. Okay. So, it is the product of these two P a into P b E n E m. So, it means the probability are function of the energies of the microstate. So, it means out of the composite system A plus B, there may be many such possibilities. Overall possibility that the overall probability is just the product of these two. It means it does not mean that there is only one such probability. Suppose you have one state, let us say just differ by a delta amount E n minus delta and another state as E m plus delta. Then also if you add them, it become E a b. The probability will be the same, the probability of occurring of this composite system is the same. So, then the expression will take place this form P A. So, it means that P A, let us say one of them is greater than this value okay, and another one P B E M is less by that value. So, overall if you add these two value it will be again be E m plus E n which is equal to E a b. So, this also satisfies that I am locating a composite system A plus B with the energy E m plus E n. Then these two product of the probabilities will also be equal to this P a b E m plus E n. Okay. So, it means the total of these two should be equal to E a b the system of interest 
a plus b but the probabilities will change and so if you notice correctly these probabilities are function of the energies energies of the microstates so it means that uh, the next question comes basically how does these probabilities the individual probabilities or the overall probability changes with respect to em or en but we can only do so we have to take a derivative of the overall energy that is pab with respect to either of this energy either em or en so if we take em we take en as constant if we take with respect to en we take em as constant so both ways we will do but the question has to be asked can we do that because this energy is not a continuous variable they are discrete variable so the issue is what they are saying they are assuming their approximation is that these energy levels are very close spaced from experiments they have found out so if they are very close spaced they assume that it is a continuous variable so that's why we can do a derivative so what we will do next part is the mathematical treatment of this expression which expression this expression expression number 1 okay so what we will do we will try to do a derivative of this function with respect to em keeping en constant again we will do with respect to en keeping em constant then we will see so we do some mathematics so what we have is for the first expression if i want to start from the first expression so what we do is we write down here do e do upon do en with respect to if i write down with respect to em okay i am taking the derivative of that overall probability expression with respect to keeping em constant so i write here pab em plus en okay so i am doing this so i am taking the left hand side first so if this is the left hand side let us do the derivative of the left hand side then we'll go to the right hand side so lhs i write here lhs of equation 1 the equation 1 is from the previous slide so this is the lhs so if i do this by standard mathematics what we do is we try to make it in full derivative so pab of en plus eb em plus en then derivative is with respect to d of em plus en then you tell the derivative of this expression em plus en so it will be d of em plus en by derivative of en keeping em constant okay so converting the partial derivative to full derivative keeping em constant what will we get if you look at this expression it will be simply be equal to you know it will be just getting cancelled out what we are having left is only this expression so if i can write down correctly it will be d of pab into en plus em em plus en d of divided by d of em plus en so this is let's say equation number 2 okay now we come to the right hand side so this is lhs now right hand side of equation 1 so right hand side of the equation 1 was the product of the two probabilities so if i do a derivative of with respect to any of the energy so the other will remain constant so let us write that so it means we will be having right side of the expression as do of do en keeping em as constant then you have the product pa of en and pb of em okay so this with respect to en it will apply only on the this part is expression so pb em will be constant so what we do pb em will be as it is kept outside so we will have only this expression of en with respect to d of en into you have the probability as it is pb em let us suppose this was equation 3 so it means equation 2 and 3 should be equal 
because I have done the RHS derivative and the LHS derivative. So it means equation 2 and 3 are equal. So if I equate equation 2 and 3, you will get, so equating equation 2 and 3, what you will get is simply d of PAB into En plus Em by d of En plus Em. Okay, well, we have written En plus Em. I am here it has written Em plus Em. Both are same because it is a total energy. So, just the order has been reversed. Expression does not change. This is equal to this dPa by En by d of En into Pb Em. Okay. This is one important outcome. Let us suppose this we have equation 4. So, this is one outcome when I do the derivative of both the sides. Same thing now we will do when we take in place of En, Em. So, what will we get? Let us see. We will worry about these two comments later. Let us see what we get if we do the same expression. Keeping En constant, keeping En constant now. Again you do the same thing, constant. LHS and RHS. If you do the derivative, I am writing a LHS, RHS. I am not showing the steps again because it will be very similar in nature. So, I will again get the similar expression that is equation 4, but in terms of subscript m. So, what will we get that subscript? So, it means that same way if we approach, we will again get the composite system probabilities. by now it will be d of en as before earlier will be equal to p of a en because now p of a en this will be constant because you are doing derivative respect to em so this derivative will apply on the other probability em with respect to d of em now this is let us say equation 5 now, if you compare equation 4 and 5, they should be equal because both are LHS is same. So, if, if I want to write down, then it will become PB EM. So, I can write here from equation 4 and 5. Okay. From equation 4 and 5, we have this PB EM. We write down the probabilities. En by d En equals to Pa into En into d Pb Em by d Em. Okay, so it means I can write this manner because both are equal to this LHS. Now just rearrange the terms. Keep all the subscript n terms or subsystem a terms to the one side and subsystem B side to the other side. So, I just rearrange this expression. I can write down like this 1 upon P A of E n into D P A of E n by D E n equals to 1 upon P B of E m into D P B Em by d of Em. So, this is a very important conclusion. I will mark this as equation 6. So, if you see in both the sides, then these two observations comes into the picture. If you see these two observations, the left hand side is independent of subsystem B. So, if you see this LHS, there are no B terms here. So, whatever properties En are of subsystem A and the right hand side RHS of this expression 6 is independent of subsystem A. You do not have any term which has En or A. So, that means both these terms are independent of each other. So, it means but it should be equal to something. So, each side of the equation must be independent of both subsystem because we started with the assumption we said that both the subsystems are independent of each other. Fine, if it is independent of each other then it will be dependent on something. What is that? That is due to the property of the thermal desirable. So, it means they both the systems will depend upon the properties of the reservoir. 
So it means here we can write down from the previous expression because it was 1 upon p a into d of p a. So I can write in terms of logarithmic values. So I can write down d of ln p a into e n by d of e n equal to d of logarithmic value p b e n by d of e m. Okay. This is nothing but some property of the thermal reservoir. What is the property? For the time being, I will write here minus beta. So if it is minus beta, so it means I can write down the individual probability in terms of beta. So P A of E n, I can write down in this manner P of E n equal to C A, some constant, then e to the power of minus beta E n, okay, and P B E m, some constant, which is a property of B into e to the power of minus beta into E m. Okay. So, each of these sides LHS and RHS have equated to beta and found out an expression of probabilities P a and P b. So, now I have the individual probability assigned in terms of exponential terms. So, that is minus beta E n minus beta E m. Now, but we need to find out what is C a and C b. So, the easiest way to find out is we use the normalization constant. Suppose if there are a number of microstates available, we know that the total number of microstates or total probabilities of all the microstates if you sum them up is equal to 1. So it means the probability of P A equal to 1 and probability of P B is equal to 1. So that condition we will use. So it means these two we use this condition P A E N. The summation across all the states n of a equal to 1, same thing, summation probability with energy E m. So, this m means it will go across all the m states of b, it is 1. So, what you do, let us say in this equation, let us suppose this is equation 6 or maybe I do not know what is this expression. So, if it is 6 expression 6 and this is also 6. So, let us suppose you give me 6a and this as 6b. Okay. So, what you do? You sum these both the expression. If you sum them up, summation and summation will apply here. Summation of Pa is equal to 1. So, it means what we have is 1 upon Ca is e to the power of minus beta E n or C A equals to, we have the expression, C A will be equal to summation because putting summation on E also, exponential term e to the power of minus beta E n. Similarly, C B will be 1 upon summation of e to the power of minus beta into E m. So, n and m are the indices, you know n is nothing but all the states n of A. And these are all the microstates m of b. Okay? So, we now got some constants. What is this? This constant C a and C b we have now obtained. So, we have taken the summation both sides and we got constant C a and C b. So, now finally, we can write the probability of locating a particular microstate. What is that expression? That is what we called as the canonical partition function. So, write down the final expression. So, we define a final expression with the canonical partition function of n v beta, this is the canonical partition function as nothing as summation e, e to the power of minus beta e i, e i into number of molecules and v across all the states. So, this is the expression for a canonical partition function. So, a canonical partition function is a function based on number of particles volume beta which is nothing but the exponential term summed across all the states. So, let us say you have number of states available for a system. 
E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, all the states may be having same number of molecules and volume. So it means if you want to find a canonical potential function, you just sum the energies and multiply with the beta, which is the constant value related to the thermal reservoir. So if you do that, you will get the canonical partition function. So this is the canonical partition function. What is the probability? Let us say if I want to locate a probability of pi of a particular microstate alpha, pi alpha. So this pi alpha will be nothing but the exponential term divided by the total partition function. So it will be e to the power of minus beta e alpha because I am expecting e alpha in terms of i, I want to find out what is the probability of locating a microstate with energy alpha that is e alpha by the overall partition function which is this e to the power of minus beta e i n v. So i will operate upon all the states, all the states of the system. So this is the probability of occurrence of a particular microstate. So these two will be our governing equation for locating the partition function and this beta obviously as you can see it is a thermal reservoir, it has some expression which is directly related to temperature. Now this temperature, what it is, what is the relation between beta and temperature that we will derive in the next class. So for this time you can understand that we have derived a partial function, a distribution expression. Distribution expression means how the energies are distributed in the terms of n, v and beta and what is the probability of locating a particular microstate. So I will conclude the lecture here. So I will take up the, in the canonical partition function in detail and try to find out what is the relation between beta and temperature in the next class. So as before all the course material has been taken from this book of Sandler. So you should go through this book also, textbook where all the derivations are done in details. So we meet next time again for the canonical partition function. Thank you. Mm -hmm.